Hey girl, come here. Victor shouted at the street through the open window of an expensive foreign car, which a split second later stopped right next to Betty, blocking her way. The shocked girl stood as if dumbfounded. She didn't even have time to realize how she was grabbed under the arms of two huge ambassadors and grinning nastily, sat down on the back seat of the car. That's it, you're in big trouble, baby. Until you serve me and my father to the full program, and so that we are also satisfied, I will not let you out of the house, squinting, said a young man in his twenties, looking at the girl with a greasy, sticky look. Come on, let's go, he ordered the bomber, who sat silently staring out the window, watching everything that was happening as if he had seen it for the first time. That day Victor was on a roll. He left the house at the crack of dawn, waking up his father's guards and driver and ordering them to get in the car and drive around the city streets. Such outbursts of strange desire and emotion were not the first time the young man had manifested themselves. But that day he wanted something special, truly exquisite and unusual. The time is right, he said, looking out the car window. The girls are young juicy who are coming back from the night who are going to work. There were no streams of people this early. There were really only young people on the street. Victor kept looking out the window until he saw what he needed. Here, he exclaimed, pointing his finger at a tired looking Betty who was coming back from her shift that morning. For want of anything better, the girl had been forced to work as a simple operator. All night on the phone, in the morning she had a splitting headache and hardly realized the reality that surrounded her. Her only dream was to get home as soon as possible, and after a shower after a hard day's work, to go to bed. When she heard a scream from a passing car, she didn't even immediately realize that it had something to do with her. It was only when she wanted to jump out of the car, but couldn't. Open the doors, open the doors, she exclaimed, sobbing. You have no right, stop the car. But instead the bomber only increased speed and Victor continued to grin. Let's at least get to know you, he said, putting his hand on the girl's knee. Because I'm a decent man, you know, well-mannered, intelligent, and somehow I'm not used to having fun with strangers. Why are you shivering so much? You'll like it. And my father is such a cool man. From fear and disgust, Betty squeezed herself into the seat of the car, and from the last strength grabbed the young man's hand and removed it from her knee. In response, the girl expected anything. She realized that she was in an absolutely powerless position and this insolent and boorish type could right now give her a slap on the face and piling on the seat, create with her the abomination that she would remember for the rest of her life. And these bogeymen who serve his interests would not even tremble, if not already join. My God, not again. She thought to herself with horror, Lord, help me, I can't stand it. I'll just die. Betty prayed and cried, and the major laughed out loud. Okay, relax, he said. What are you so tense about? I'm used to coziness and comfort, you know? So let's get home, where my big, comfortable and soft bed. In the meantime, you get ready. Betty realized that only a miracle would save her, and she believed in miracles. Well, my life can't just end like this, can it? She pondered to herself, trying to calm down a little. There must be someone to help me. I just can't believe this juvenile scumbag is going to get away with this. As they pulled up to the luxurious mansion, the young man grabbed the girl by the arms, and ignoring her resistance and screams for help, dragged her into the house. Shut up. He hissed in her ear and grabbed her by the throat. Or I won't drag you to bed. I'll spank you right in the basement. You'll know. Sobbing with helplessness, Betty realized that she could not escape the terrible fate that fate had prepared for her. And why her? What had she done to deserve it, had she not had enough trials? Thoughts were spinning in her head one after another, and in the depths of her soul, she continued to pray desperately that the horror that would spoil the rest of her life, leaving deep wounds in her soul and body, would not happen. What's going on here? A middle-aged woman who had come down from the second floor asked in a commanding voice. As soon as she heard the screaming and fussing on the first floor, she immediately came out of her room to see what was wrong. And when she saw Victor holding the arms and throat of the bursting out beady, she turned pale and take your hands off her, she commanded. But Victor did not even move. The young man was greatly surprised by the behavior of his mother, who knew about all his pranks, but never prevented them. I did not understand, are you deaf? 
she continued, having already snapped at a shout. At that moment, the woman could not think of anything except that the noise did not come running to her husband, who that day was so tired at work that he fell asleep right in his office. Mom, what's the matter with you after all? Victor asked with a smirk. Have you decided to fight for morality? Why should I? It's just an ordinary skin. Look how she is trembling in anticipation of bright and voluptuous moments. Get out of my way. Victor knew Maddie had a heavy hand. Once when he'd met her wrath, he'd gotten such a slap on the wrist that his head hadn't gone away for a month. Then Victor was still a teenager, but he remembered it for the rest of his life. And now the young man simply did not realize the seriousness of the situation. He was sure that his mother was only pretending in front of a stranger that she did not justify her son's actions, and having broken the comedy a little, she would let him go upstairs, and if something started to happen, she would justify him again, telling the investigation that the girl herself asked to visit and gave it to him. What's the big deal? Victor did not doubt for a second that it would be so, but he could not even imagine that this time it was much more serious, and his mother's disobedience would turn into extremely unpleasant consequences for him. With all her might, Maddie grabbed her son's groin, and looking into Victor's eyes, who was writhing in pain, she hissed. Did I not make myself clear? Get out of here. And don't let me see you again today. And if you try to stick your nose out of your room, you'll get a beating that will not be enough. Barely moving his legs, Victor wandered to his room. His mother's blow was so strong that the young man struggled to get up to the second floor. Well, I'll deal with you too. Maddie said angrily when she heard the banging of her son's closing door. Get out of here, child, and get out of here. And forget you ever came here, you understand? If you try to say a word about what happened or make a report to the police, I'll get you out from under the ground, and then you understand. Tears were streaming down the cheeks of the frightened Betty. The girl hardly realized that she was saved from those nightmarish minutes, which she might have had to endure in the room with the Major. She was afraid that it might happen again, so she decided to ask Madi a question before the woman grabbed her by the scruff of the neck and threw her out of the house. Sorry, Betty whispered quietly through her tears. What if your son finds me again? Only he wouldn't drag me back to his house. You know what I'm talking about. How can I be sure it won't happen again? Ah, you little brat, you little brat, Maddie exclaimed. You want some kind of guarantee? Isn't that a lot to take on, little girl? Do you think too much of yourself? Is that too much to ask? Get out of here and be thankful you're not being carried off on your own. As soon as Maddie threw Beathy out the door, she sat down on the couch and grabbed her head. Jesus, she thought to herself. Well, no, not this. For so many years I have lived quietly, and never even remembered all this. Why did my fool have his eye on her? It's a big city. Why didn't he bring any other girl into the house? I wouldn't have prevented it, but her, not her. What am I supposed to do with all this now? The thoughts swirled in Maddie's mind, one after another. She recognized the girl immediately, but at first she couldn't believe her own eyes when she saw her. This simply couldn't be. But to the woman's great regret, it was the very reality in which she found herself by fate, by coincidence. Oh, how she wanted to believe that Betty would never show up on their doorstep again, and that Victor wouldn't seek her out and try to get what he wanted. But how would she explain to her son, her only son, whom she had always spoiled and forgiven absolutely everything? She covered for him even in the toughest and most sensitive situations, against both common sense and her husband's opinion. He could touch anyone and drag into the house or into the bushes any girl he had his eye on. What would she say to him? Medi sank into memories of days long past that she thought were long gone. She didn't want to think about it all. She had lived so peacefully all these years, confident that the girl who might have disturbed her peace had long ago left for another town with a new family, and she would never run into her in her life, even by accident. But why has fate thrown me such an ordeal? Maddie asked both the universe and herself. Why? What have I done wrong? What am I supposed to do with all this now? Maddie had always lived with a sense of inner dissatisfaction, watching her mother's trepidation for her sister time after time. Why is that? Asked Maddie to herself, who didn't understand how it was possible to love twins differently. I mean, she and I are exactly alike, but somehow she gets everything and I get nothing, 
Katie didn't even realize how much she was hurting one of her daughters. She was always so openly happy about Veronica's successes, but never praised Mary, who was always trying to show off to her mother in order to win her love. When Kathy passed away, Mary rejoiced. She realized how awful it was and that it was wrong, but she couldn't help it. She was pleased that Veronica had lost her main pillar in life, her mother who always and always gave in to her and supported her every decision. But when a few months later she met him, a successful young man who became not only a new support and support for Veronica, but also a very promising ticket to a future wealthy life, Maddie could hardly contain her fury. Why didn't he pay attention to me? She resented. After all, we are like two peas in a pod. Few people would be able to tell us apart at all, and that was true. But Alex was the only person, besides his mother, who could tell the difference between the sisters and never confused them. Maddie silently and angrily watched how happy her sister was next to the man she loved, pretended to be genuinely happy for Veronica, and in fact kept a stone behind her soul for many years. Not a single muscle did not tremble at the woman when Veronica was hit by a car, and Alex was left alone in her arms with a small daughter. At that moment Maddie thought of only one thing, it was time to take the bull by the horns, and immediately after her sister's funeral she began to woo the grief-stricken widower, who being at that moment too morally weak to resist persistent female charms, fell for Maddie's kindness and compassion. How will you live alone? She wailed, holding Alex's hand as he downed another drink, trying to numb his pain. Your daughter is so little. Betty needs a mother's care. She can't do without it. She's just a baby. She lost her mother when she was two years old, and Maddie was not going to replace her Veronica, who adored her little daughter madly. The woman was looking for different ways to get rid of the girl, thought over the options, but before she waited for the moment when Alex finally surrendered, and their relationship was no longer limited to only bed, and was formalized. I'm really not acting like a human being, he said thoughtfully. I feel like I'm using you to numb my pain and satisfy my lust. It doesn't feel right, he spoke openly, unabashedly, and Mehdi knew that there was no love or deep affection between them and there was no way there ever would be. But did she care about that? No. She'd been in love with Alex from the first day she met Veronica, and she dreamed of being in her sister's husband's bed. Once he married Maddie, the man settled down. He was no longer tormented by the conscience of taking advantage of her weakness and favor. If he had only known how this decision would turn out for him, he would never have made such a rash act. How can you make such a suggestion to me? The director of the orphanage was outraged when she saw Maddie with a little girl in her arms. The woman placed an envelope on the table in front of her, which was literally bursting with a thick wad of money. That afternoon, Maddie had been out with Betty, as usual. She had long wanted to get rid of her late sister's daughter, who constantly reminded Alexei of Veronica and drove him into apathy. She needed a child of her own. The man was to have only one hair, and it was a son which at that moment Maddie already carried under her heart, but had not yet informed her husband that soon there would be an addition to their family. I'm begging you. Maddie begged, playing out the tragedy with tears in her eyes. My husband will go crazy if this girl lives in our house. My son is about to be born, and he deserves his love more than anyone else. I can no longer live under the same roof as my late sister's child. My husband falls into some kind of melancholy every now and then, and I need to move on with my life and get rid of the living reminder of his pain. You must understand me. After a few minutes silence, which the director of the orphanage spent in thought, the woman gave her consent. All right, she said, I'll help you, and I'll change the girl's identity so that no one will find her. That day Maddie came home in tears, and for Alex it became the second most tragic day of his life. Lost her how? He exclaimed, barely holding back tears when he heard that Maddie had gone into the store during her walk and left her stroller at the entrance and didn't find it when she came out. How could you even leave her alone? Why didn't you take her with you? I always did. Maddie whispered softly, it's our local store, that's what all the moms do. I didn't think this would happen. Theatrically rolling her eyes, Maddie rolled off the couch onto the floor and clutched her stomach as she continued to sob. What's wrong with you? caught up with Alex, who called an ambulance at the same second. That's how he found out that he was about to have a son. Maddie was satisfied with the scene, 
which her husband believed in like a little child who trusts everything around him. When several months of searching failed to find the girl, Maddie was already pregnant, and Alex was more focused on his future son than on his missing daughter. The man simply didn't have the emotional strength to worry about two things at once, so he focused on one, eventually coming to terms with the fact that Betty was gone forever and would never be found. The man didn't even want to think about what could have happened to her. When he rose and became a truly wealthy man, he did not ask the security staff to continue the search, which in due time was indifferently completed by the police. Alex was too afraid to learn the terrible truth, and really didn't want to traumatize his family. His son was growing up, and Alex was completely focused on raising the boy, and the man would never have known that he had a daughter, if not for a coincidence, which was a complete surprise for both him and her. Girl, wait a minute, where are you in such a hurry? Alex shouted, getting out of the car and running after Betty. For the first time the man saw a copy of his dead wife a few days ago, and he couldn't believe his eyes. He didn't dare to approach the girl. I'll frighten her with my stalking. He thought to himself, and aren't there many people who look alike? Perhaps I am mistaken. That same day he instructed one of his security officers, whom he trusted implacably, to make his own investigation. And what was his surprise when he learned that the girl he had secretly photographed on the street had not only grown up in an orphanage, but had been there almost at the same time his daughter had disappeared. And the name too. The director of the orphanage didn't bother and enrolled the girl on the papers she had in her possession. Dead two-year-olds who had no time to bury, the woman decided not to change her name, but the initials were different. The birth certificate of little Betty, which Maddie had thoughtfully brought along with the girl, the woman destroyed. How could you do that? Alex asked Maddie, who had been summoned for a serious conversation the same day when the folder with all the documents and evidence was laid on his desk. How could you have the conscience? In response, the woman only remained silent. She simply did not know what to say to her husband. Until recently, she had been sure that the truth would never come out, but she was shocked that everything had spiraled so quickly. Literally in a matter of days. Damn that Betty. The woman thought to herself, and Alex on the same day announced to his wife about the divorce, and to his absent-minded son that he had bought him a small apartment on the outskirts of the city, where he would have to move in the near future. Father, but how so? exclaimed the young man. It's not fair. It's not fair that you've been getting away with everything. Your mother was always covering for you, and I was forced to do it. And you grew up to be an arrogant, unscrupulous bastard who does nothing but eat at my expense and make a fool of himself at every turn. It's all quite fair. The man answered sternly, and for the first time Victor realized that his father was serious. When Alex found out what his son had almost done to Betty, he was furious. The girl, who was scared to death of the man who ran out of the car, told him everything to his face. Why did you run like that? He asked Betty, whom he had managed to stop to tell her that she had a father. The story of being kidnapped right on the road was creepy, and when the man realized that his son had done it in his own car, momentarily deprived the young man of his transportation, you can ride the bus. You can ride the bus. You won't fall apart he said sternly and took away Victor's second set of car keys. While Madi and Victor were getting used to their new life in separate apartments, Alex and Betty were building a relationship they hadn't had in years. I didn't know, I didn't know anything, repented the man, who sincerely repented for not being able to find out the whole truth at that time. There were no connections and opportunities, and I didn't want to. Focused on his son and tried to give him all his love, and it turned out that behind his back, his wife deprived the most precious person for him father. I'm sorry girl, I'm sorry, Alex said, hugging Betty tightly. I'll do everything to correct the misunderstanding, which was my fault. And Betty didn't blame him for anything. On the contrary, she was very glad that she had found a close person and a home, to which she moved from the old room, which she received immediately after graduation from the orphanage. Every day their relationship became warmer and warmer. Together with her father she visited her mother, whom she had never known, at the cemetery, and together they never ceased to marvel at how people so similar in appearance could be so different inside. They'd have the same face, Alex reasoned, and such different souls. One of them is as light and pure as the sky on a clear day, and the other one is as black as soot. 